Hello and welcome to Adorned by Jennifer. Today's Tuesday tip is going to be a quick tutorial on how to make an elegant bow on the top of your presents. So we're working towards something like this in a very economical and affordable way. So I will share some basics. I don't claim to be an expert, but this is what's worked for me and I hope it can work for you as well. I went ahead and wrapped the present because that is definitely not an area of specialty for me, but I have found a couple of things that do help with it. Something as basic as a tape dispenser that is weighted is very helpful. So when you go to get the tape, you don't have to use both of your hands. I also found last year this little crazy tool. It's a little tube that goes on your wrapping paper. It slides down, it has a blade on it. And I was a little bit pessimistic at first, but I did find that it is super helpful. It cuts like butter if you have the right angle. So you literally just slide it on the bottom of your tube and you can see the little cutter here and it cuts perfectly. It is fantastic. I highly recommend this one. I tried several, several other things and they did not work so well. Another tip on wrapping is using different color wrapping paper. If you have several different family members, you can get a different color for each person. I personally like to match my Christmas tree, especially if presents are going to be sitting under the tree in advance. And I also like to actually wrap things for my children because I think it's a little bit more magical receiving a gift when you get to unwrap something. But for the adults, I do often opt for gift bags because it's very quick, convenient, and I recycle those as well. So. Another tip for the kiddos, if you have little ones and they don't know how to read, I have been known to write on the tape on the underbelly. I still do it. I don't tell my kids, but very, very small on the tape. I write their initial and I'll write something that helps me know what it is. Or if they're supposed to open it at the same time, I'll just do one of two or something like that so that I know one of one, one of two, and I'll number them. So those are some tips. Now, once they start being able to read, I started switching to Spanish. I know enough Spanish to be dangerous and I will write myself a clue in Spanish so that I know generally what I what I wrapped. So those are just some basic hints. Um, you can take it or leave it for yourself. Another thing that I've done is for Adorned by Jennifer, I've had several people on YouTube ask about where to get things. And I have an Etsy page, it's Adorned by Jennifer, no spaces. So it's all smushed together, A-D-O-R-N-B-Y-J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R, Adorned by Jennifer, my same handle on YouTube as well, and Facebook and Instagram, it's the same handle. Uh, but I do sell the Christmas ornaments. I've had several people ask about those. I sell them in different sizes, different colors. You can check out my Etsy page for the details. I also make custom gift tags. And this is very tiny. I don't know that you're gonna be able to see it, but you can check it out on my Etsy page or any of my social places. And they are very handy because they clip onto your package. So you don't have to take the, the extra time to make all of your little gift tags. And you can recycle them so you can use them every year. So on Christmas morning, I, I have already clipped them to the packages and then everybody just knows they unclip them and they put them in a pile and I collect them and put them in my wrapping paper area for the following year. I like to keep them fairly generic because you can use them for other times of the year, but I also do do the thematic, I can do anything you want because I stamp them by hand so I can have them say whatever you'd like, but I do do the uh, want, need, read, and wear themes where you can have them say what need, wear, and read. And I can even put the child's name on it so that when they go to the tree, they know which present to look for. Oh, this is, it's time to open the read one. So they all open the read one at the same time or something like that. So you can reuse these. It's a fantastic gift, even for if there's a family that is young, uh, because they can use it over and over and over every year. And it makes life easier for mama or whoever is wrapping the presents. So. That's another thing. While I'm on it, I'm just mentioning, if you're interested, I do make jewel. I make jewelry of all kinds of things. This is random money from all over the world. And if you have like a special trip or a honeymoon or a leftover coin sitting in your drawer, I can stamp them and turn them into jewelry, whether it's a pendant, a bracelet, cufflinks, all kinds of things. So just message me if you're interested. And the last thing is I do have some fun. These are vintage 
cotton pearls from the World War II era where they had to confiscate the equipment to harvest the genuine pearls. And so the jewelers came up with a way to create a lacquer that went over cotton of all things to create the look of a pearl. And so it looks very, very much like a pearl. These are the jumbo size. These are the petite size. They're super lightweight, but they're super sturdy, surprisingly. And it comes in a fun ring as well. It's an adjustable ring. And each set, either the earring or the ring or this earring set, they're all $24.99. So if you're interested, just message me and I can get those to you. But they're super lightweight. I don't even know that they're in my ear. And they're, they've got some nice scale to them as well. So those are just a couple of things that um, if you're interested, I've had a lot of people ask about. Back to the wrapping. So another thing that I do, I try to recycle and upcycle things as much as possible, but I do like really elegant things. So I save our ribbon from year to year. This is my ribbon bin. This is my Christmas ribbon bin and it matches my wrapping paper. I can't remember if I already mentioned, but you can get wrapping paper in the color, a different color for each child. I like it to match my tree, so I've got a plaid, I've got a polka dot, and then it looks really nice under the tree, but these are not the popular colors this year. So when you find something, if it's not a traditional color, I highly recommend after the season to stock up as much as possible. I think I bought like 40 rolls of wrapping paper one year. I'm sure my husband thought I was crazy, um, but now I have wrapping paper that can match my tree from year to year. So then I basically take my ribbon on Christmas morning. I uh, have, everybody knows they take their ribbon off and then they hand it to me and I roll it into these little balls. And then when it's time for me to wrap a present, I will just grab, I try to do my smaller pieces of ribbon around the bottom. I'm kind of fishing through here. This is just a smaller roll. So I uncoil it. It's a little crinkly, but that's okay. Nobody, nobody minds too much. And I will, let's see how this works around here. Yeah, it's a little too small. So I'm gonna save that for another one. Let's see, we'll just get, this one might have a little bit too much, but that's okay. It's kind of a larger box. Um, I put it underneath, nothing fancy. And I basically just kind of tie it like you would a shoestring, just like that. Okay, so there's nothing, nothing much to it. And then I get something that has a little bit more volume. And you know what, for grins and giggles, let's just add a second one in there. You can see it's very scientific. I will just grab two and on my YouTube channel, I had somebody mention from Germany, they were so sad they don't have wired ribbon over there. And if you're watching, you can do this concept without wired ribbon. It just may not hold the form quite as much, but if you do it shorter, you can get the volume going on. So I just did a loop, one loop about here, have a little tail, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, making sure that the pattern shows. You see that, flip it up, and then whatever is left over, this one doesn't have much, this one has enough to loop one more time. It's nothing too fancy, just loop, 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 and pinch. You see I'm pinching it there? Now I'm gonna place it right in the middle, stick my thumb down so that I don't lose it, holding it down and I'm grabbing those two tails and I'm just gonna knot over it. And the nice thing about wire ribbon is that you can kind of fluff it, but here's where the magic happens. You pull it apart and you give it a little volume and a little life. The wire really does help if you are able to get your hands on wire, wire ribbon. And if you live in the United States, some, some place like the warehouse stores like Costco or Sam's Club, they sell big, huge rolls of ribbon. I love to buy these big, big containers because they're pretty affordable. Or the crafting stores, a lot of times they go 50% off super early and sometimes they go down even more. Although locally, I have found that most of our crafting stores are out of most of their Christmas supplies already. So I also, because they're old, they've kind of frayed. So I will give it a fresh little cut. I think I've used these ribbons at least six years. So they've definitely been living a good life, but they get just a smidge shorter every year as I give them a little refresh because they look a little tired at the end. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to, but I fold the tail in half 
and give it a diagonal cut just to give it that little dub cut at the end. That wasn't my best one, but you get the idea. And you know what? I don't think my kiddos mind one bit. I just like it to look pretty if it's gonna be sitting out for the whole Christmas season. So there is a really pretty ribbon and it really didn't take much effort at all. The other thing that I will do, and in the process of moving things around here, I had a small little piece of ribbon that has gone MIA, of course, <laughs> and things are flying around. Let's see if I see it here for a hot second. Oh, well, here's a tail of it. That's not gonna be too helpful, but I will, um, let's see. Oh, there it is. Oh, I'm back. Um, I just get a little thin piece of ribbon. And if you want larger lobster claws for your presents, I can totally do that. I made some recently and I did, I just went ahead and put larger lobster claws. These ones I made a while ago, so I've just been reusing them. But I just tie it on to the thicker bow and I make just a little knot so that there's somewhere for it to grab onto because the thick, the thick ribbon is a little bit difficult to uh, get the little clips to stick on. You can do it. You could just punch a little hole through it and it would be fine. But um, I'm gonna just show you kind of the final effect. It's pretty and it works. If I can find my scissors too. Everything's dropping to the floor. Um, we'll just do a little cut. This one says to my daughter from mommy and daddy. And this is actually, let me think. I actually need a change because I know the polka dot ribbon. I wanna make sure I put the tag on the right child's uh, treasure. Okay. So here is, you can see I've got their, their gift tag. It didn't take me any time to make that. I just clip it on there. And here you've got a voila, a beautiful present to put under your tree. And you don't have to do it to all of them. You could just do it on the top ones or something like that. But like I said, this is very old ribbon. Reuse it. It's a great way to get um, multiple uses. So hope you find that helpful and let me know what you think. Merry Christmas.